time with some daytime today. Today. Yes, yes, yes. It is hot in LA. Back on me. It is hot in Los Angeles, and I'm not liking that part. Um, where I'm going, it's hotter, so I'm just, I'm not happy about that. But it's warm. But I said I come on. Um, we talk about a few talk about a few things. I'm not gonna be on here super long because I have a show to do after this. I'm doing the Obi Wan Kenobi show. Uh, I just finished watching; it was good. Um. I wanted to mention uh, there was yet another shooting. It's becoming an epidemic now of, of, of just crazy proportions. In Tulsa, Oklahoma, at a medical building campus, uh, three people are dead, and uh, the shooter's dead. So I don't, I just don't even, I mean, what are you saying to that? It's just, it's another one. It's another one. Another one. This, again, makes no sense. We have no gun reform or control here in America. And I just think it's, it's going to keep going. People are just going to die. It's going to keep going. And people are just not, that's just how it's going to be, I guess. So that's kind of crazy. Uh, getting ready for my trip. Going out of town early in the morning. I am very excited. we leaving town for a couple of days. Hello, hello, Ken Clark. I was going for a couple of days, and I'll be back. I just have my, I just, I just I look at my ticket. My ticket's here. We get my ticket together. Um, yeah. Uh, hello, Maxine Thompson, everybody. Um, what makes me nervous traveling a little bit. Uh, nowhere safe, you guys. Nowhere safe. Not where you live, not where I live. Nowhere is safe. That's how sad that is. Um, but we're going to try to continue to live our lives, which include, which include watching our TV shows. And even that's getting crazy. And I already talked this morning about the racism being put on Moses Ingram for Obi-Wan Kenobi. So on JLJ This Morning Live, I talked about that. On the show tonight, I will be mentioning it, um, as I should, on that show to that audience. Uh, I'm mentioning how I feel about that tonight a little bit uh, as we do our recap. And that's at 8 o'clock tonight, so it's Saturday time. Obi-Wan Kenobi show here at JLJ Media. So I'm going to do that also. Um, but it's just it's getting... We kept our heads in the sand, obviously, because literally it's coming to our, it's coming everywhere. Like, no way. I have a, I have a brother in, in, in Tulsa. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's everywhere. It's literally everywhere. You just can't escape it. We're, we're in serious trouble, you guys. We're in serious trouble. We're going to hell in a handbasket. And it's just not, um, I'm trying to stay hopeful. I stay hopeful for that. Uh, but I won't talk about that because I talked about this morning. I'll talk about it tonight. Uh, the whole Star Wars thing. I already, I'm talked out at the moment. I'm going to talk about it in a few hours when I do my Obi-Wan Kenobi show. Um, and which is a shame because it was a great episode. It was episode three of Obi-Wan Kenobi. It was a great episode. I'm buzzing from how great it was. And I still have to talk about this stupid racism thing on some level, but that'll be later. Um, so this, what I want to bring up um, is... Uh, number one, there was a new Michael. First of all, your hospital was going crazy today. Uh, it was hilarious. I couldn't stop laughing. Um, they brought in Robert Adamson, who, if you guys don't know this, was Noah on, as Kim's mentioned, on Young and Arrested. Also, he's the ex-husband of my friend, Lindsay Godfrey, who's on Days, and they share a beautiful daughter. Um, their daughter is so cute. And so, if you know who he was, now you get a little... Um, a little look who's related. I mean, it's funny in real life that I used to do on, on days or audition days. But look who's related. But yes, yeah, so he's ex-husband, father of children, and you know, and, and Matt. So that was kind of funny. It's fun to see him act. Chad Duel came out. It was COVID related. So it was COVID. So I was wondering that he came out and said it was COVID related. COVID has not gone anywhere. Um, it's my test from yesterday. I am negative. I'm totally negative. I had a COVID scare too. 
and had to quarantine for five days. So and not going over the weekend. So I understand that whole thing. COVID is not gone. Um, so now I'm assuming he is vaccinated because he saw the show. So so he says he's doing fine. So thanks, Chad Duel, for letting us know. Um, ooh, it's like it's just tough, it's tough kids. Tough. It's tough. Um, and yes, this is a temporary recast. Uh, and it was kind of it's funny when GH does this because sometimes they hit it out the park and even his brief his brief time, it was really good. He was really good as Michael. I was like, oh, yeah, he had a whole different energy. Um, and that's what's so funny when they do recast on shows, right? It's a whole different energy. You know, you go, you go, oh, okay. I see something a little different here. Um, you know, I was watching, uh, I watched Days today also. I caught up on Days. Uh, I side note of all about EJ and Bell. I'm all in. I'm all in. Um, and just watching all those, all those shenanigans over there today. It was, it was a good episode today. Um, but here's the thing. Um, let's say, oh, so when you put new people on, oh, Phil's five out of five, Johnny Hayden. Uh, no, but he was good. It's a new Michael. I was like, New Michael, they brought in the new Sam, Lindsay Hartley, put them together. I don't know. No, but it was, it was, it was, it was nice. And, you know, they decided not to get me spoiler alert. Yeah, you know, but I, I, I get a chance to, she's not getting a break, but anyway, it's, it's, it's very interesting storylines, very interesting storylines there. Uh, but the one everybody's talking about, which I think is hilarious, because you're supposed to be grossed out, is the Nicholas Esme sex scene. Um, because it wasn't sexy at all. They, they, the way they filmed it was cute, the whole thing. To me, I called it lazy writing. I think it's always lazy writing. But like, okay, like for me, side on days, I'm not a fan of Rafe and Nicole. I love Galen Gehring. I know him. I love Arian Zucker. I know her personally. I know both personally. Love them. To me, boring Bill. She had much more chemistry with EJ. She had much more chemistry with... with um, <clears throat> With um, oh my God, what say? With uh, with Eric, much more chemistry with with Brady, and you're putting him with Rafe. Uh, how do you know films? How do you know EJ's a terrible kisser? Like, you kissed him? Like what's going on? You got something you don't tell me? I'm like, how do you know he's a terrible kisser? Oh, I I I I I've never kissed Dan Furgal, so I have no idea. Is he is he terrible? I mean, how do you how do you how do you know? You know something? I'm all ears. Tell me. Uh, but back to, to, to back to, uh, yeah, I'm, just not, I'm not. Oh, you do. I see Matt. That's why I love you. We're on the same page. Um, yeah, that's just. Oh, that's, oh I, I'm trying to get a little text. Um, but back to, to uh, Esme and Nicholas. I think people sometimes forget you're supposed to be upset. People are fan outraged. You're supposed to be. Like, like a friend of mine said, I won't say his name, he's a friend of mine. He said, lock you, lock me up with a 19-year-old and see what happens, obviously. I mean, if they're hot, you know. Uh, Bobby, I, mean, Bobby, I, think it's hilarious. I think it's hilarious, you guys. Hello, Lori C, Barbara F. Love it, love it, love it. I love it. I think it's hilarious. I love it. I I was kind of laughing the whole time. Again, I think it's lazy writing. You knew this had to happen, right? They were going that direction on purpose because what Johnny Hayden just said in the chat room is completely true. But Maura West, aka Ava, and even Nicholas Chavez, who plays Spencer, when they find out, it's going to be lit. Do the kids still say lit? I don't know. They say lit. It's gonna be crazy talk. It's gonna be. It's because she's gonna. Oh my god! It's gonna, it's gonna be so good. I mean, I think. It, I think at this point, Nicholas is just dumb. He has no plan. We learn that Spencer has a plan, but I don't think Nicholas has a plan. This is this is this is something he just, you know. But I, I'm laughing that folks are having such adverse reaction to this because that's what's supposed to happen, right? That's what story time is supposed to happen. The same with the Michael. Funny, when 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 Willow finds out Nina is her mother, I think it's, I mean, you know, okay. I'm, I'm going back to the kissing. 
his kissing technique is off, for example. Tom Cruise will have great kissing. Okay, films, I I guess I never really paid attention that heavily. I he looks like he's doing his job to me. I don't know. I I okay. Films looks at kissing techniques and looks at all the okay, I I think Dan's hot, but I'm so I'm all I'm all in. So I don't know. I don't I don't, I don't know. Okay. Victor kind of migrating all the time. I don't know, all Victor wants to do is bring the cast back together. You know, that's all he that's all he wants. That's all he wants. That's all he wants. Um but it's it's but see it's it's even though it's, to me it's lazy, it's like it's going to really go forward. The same thing with now Carly has information that will she give it from Nina. That almost is kind of poetic justice on some level. Right? That's how it happens. Eric's not a priest anymore on Days of Our Lives. So does that mean, and, and Brady was said, are you sure you're not over it, Nicole? Even though I, I, to me, the Eric Nicole ship has just sailed off into the sunset. I don't, I don't, to me, they've made them so boring that I don't even want to go there. Ashley and Victoria have good chemistry. They do, but they can't be together. He did her wrong. They can't be together. He can't. I'm looking at Ashley and Diane. I was like, oh, now that's something on YR. That's something going on there. But all these couplings, they're supposed to take you on a ride, right? And with Brits in the water, and the new guy literally crashes on her. <laughs> I could, oh, that CGI, fake CGI. Daytime tries. I get you, daytime. You try, you try. You have a, a small budget. But I was busting. I literally laughed out loud. I, I literally LOL'd where they go, they're all, look out. And all of a sudden, this cape covers the screen. And I mean, I'm, and it's Josh Kelly. He's the guy wife live. I like him. Um, that was hilarious. I thought it was, I thought it was, it was hilarious. He actually landed on Brent. That was fun. Daytime tries. They try sometimes to do little special effects. They try, and I said, yeah, I give it to them. I'm like, okay, I, I I chuckled, but I was like, okay, here you go. You know, try to give it to them. Um, but in days for sure, you know, they're always gonna be the old devil stuff. They're all kind of personal banks on that one. Um, and I don't think writing Sean. Sean is just, Sean Douglas is being dumb when it comes to Jan. I love, I love that Sierra's like, Nope, 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 nope. I couldn't stop laughing at that scene too. He was like, my baby. He's like, no. He's like, no. That's my final answer. I loved it. Now, Brandon Beamer's hot though. I gotta tell you, his eyes, his piercing blue, uh, ice blue eyes are distracting. And he has like muscles. He's like lean muscles everywhere. It's like, it's, just, it's crazy. It's just too much. And I've seen, I've met him in person. I've met him in person. And he looks like that in person. He's just as hot. He's just as hot. I know Brad was filming the whole time. I couldn't stop laughing. But okay, folks, I love me, love me some Kirsten Storms. Why are they dressing her the way they're dressing her? Okay, she may not be as skinny as the other bitches on the show, but she ain't super huge either. The way we dress, they're dressing like she's not, I don't know why they're dressing like she's lost in the prairies and shit like that. I'm like, why? You can have cute clothes. Come on. Her, that, Amanda Seaton and her get the worst dressed stuff sometimes. I'm like, the two beautiful women, why are they dressing them like that? Like, hello? Come on. Um, uh, Barbara, if I was in the Ryan Tub a little bit, but I did watch Edge of Night. And I know it's probably going to cost some ruffles, but when I interviewed Lori Lachman, pre scandal, uh, I asked her about her playing Jody Travis. And she was like, you bought it, Rich. She was like, so impressed. I brought it way back. When she's on Edge of Night. So, but I, I don't use it saying her name causes controversy for people, but I, she was very sweet to me and everything. And I know she's done some stuff, but she seems like she's atoned and blah, blah, blah. Um, oh, Robert looks hot. Robert's hot. Robert, Robert. See, the thing is, people can get older and be hot. That's the whole point, right? If people get older and they can still look, look good. Yes, Andrew's wife got a Tony nomination. Yes, she is a major Broadway actress. Yes, she's great. Um, but anyway, so I just, I, the Esme Nicholas thing makes me just laugh so hard because every, it's like, you know, it's, it's one of the, you know, it's one of the few times we all come together as a sub community. 
and agree on something. Like, but seriously, because so I told you, so it, it, it's, it's bonkers. Everybody's all over the place. When this happened, I feel like every across color lines, across orientations, across across everything. Like I think everyone was like you. I mean, seriously, I make it makes me smile so hard because I'm like, see, we can't all we can is so pretty because so Twitter can come together. We can. Um, so you know, it's like that's that to me is the funny part. It's like we can. Um, oh, I want to give a shout out, even since daytime today, it's still so related. I want to give a shout out to um, the Ewing Barbecue Podcast. And thank you, thank you, thank you for making a shout out to my Dallas, my Dallas After Show podcast. My Dallas After Show is, is exploded the last two weeks because of her and the moment we were there. So thank you so much. I want to make sure I, I say that. Get that out there and say thank you. Christian J. LeBlanc, my cousin. Um, he is. He's he, that silver hair. If you watch our interview, he tells you why he went silver. So you look at the wide army spotlight. Christian J. LeBlanc, Christian J. LeBlanc he will tell you why he went silver. Um, there are some clips of her in that show on why on, on YouTube. Oh, yeah, that show. Yeah, yeah, there are. There are. There are Matt, we guys talk to each other. Yeah, that's the yeah, Matt's right. Matt is so completely right. Um, Yes, so I, mean, I know I'm going all around today, kind of like I'm talking about days, GH, whatever. Um, you know. Oh, Disney Flower, you know they're going to do the predictor roots. You know how that's what they're going to do. Something happened to Wiley. They're going to have to all come together. The problem, <coughs> the, the blessing and the curse of soap opera is that I always tell people everyone is bad. Everyone has a past. Everyone has done horrible things. So it's funny when they get on their high horses that, that they be like, but you were bad too. And you were bad too. And you were bad too. So it's like, they're all unfit. Everybody's unfit. You think about it. Just like real life. Chris is in a play called uh, Cat in a Hot Tin Roof. He plays Big Daddy in it in New York. If you have a chance, go see it. Support my family members, support the family. Um, he's really good. If I was in New York, I'd go see him. Obviously, I'm not in New York. I'm going to Sacramento. So, if he ever brings us to LA, I'm probably going to go. Well, probably, probably, I'll, I'll probably, I'll go to see him. Support the support my family members. Um, clips, yeah. So, yes, yeah, so, exactly. Alan and Monica back in the day, famous. Famous stuff. I was saying, it just, it just, it's just funny that everybody has something bad. So it's funny when they pull these, you're worse than I am, you're worse than I am. It's just kind of like, everybody's bad. I mean, it's just, you know. So uh, that's kind of funny. Uh, but anyway, so no, it's, it's, uh, it's I, think, I think, like I said, again, I'm chuckling because I think everybody in, in the soap Twitter world, on soap world, is like, we had a collective ew. Now, why do I think the door was locked? It may seem like they're going to go in, but the door's locked. I have a feeling they don't find out tomorrow that Nina, that Nina, that Ava and Spencer don't find out tomorrow. I think I feel they don't. So I think it's going to be a little while before it actually happens. Um, and on days, Jan brought up a really funny point about Ben Weston. And wants to be rehabilitated like he is with Dr. Marlene Evans. I actually like the writing on this one. It's like, you know what? That is a smart thing to, to talk about. It's like, well, Ben Weston is a serial killer. He was. Yes, he worked very hard. He changed, blah, 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 blah. So she's like, why can't I? Even though we know she's batshit crazy. But I think it's a funny plot twist they're trying to deal with her using him. As, as an example, I, you know what? I see what she's saying. I see exactly what she's saying. I get it. I get it. When people go off and Carly, I am like, oh, when she has her shades. Like, They're all shady. Everybody's shady. Oh, I show they're shady. I love the little Ava, um, was Ava, Anna, and Valentine little quick scene. With the, the shooting range apparently is the set of choice this week. Um, and they're all a little bit be shitty with each other a little bit. It's like a shooting range. It was kind of fun seeing Ava and, and them do it, you know. Kind of, you know. So it's, it's, it's they're all shady. It's everybody, everybody's shady. Everybody, everybody's doing stuff. 
you know, I love I love Leo and and uh, Gwen talking about what they're gonna do next to people. It's all it's soap opera. It's fun. It's fun. Uh, I when I when I comment on stuff usually online, it's usually on something real life related of a soap. And I I, mean, I might write some story. I might I might comment on a few storylines here and there. Well, there was one person I kept commenting on. You guys all know about. It. I don't want to mention his name. I don't, I don't want to say his name three times and Beetlejuice happens. Um, but for the most part, I'm like I did some new storylines. I just chuckle. I say, okay, you go that direction. I say it for the shows. I say it for the shows. You know, um, so I, you know, you know, anyone, well, everyone loves a gun when she does. Yes. They all, they all, but they all do. They've all had gun issues, which on soaps, I almost think we need to kind of cut that down too. So real life is getting really scary. Um, so uh, I had a shooting the other night uh, that was outside my house. Middle of night, then you get helicopters, and it just, it's just again, I, I'm not I'm not against guns. I you know I used to work in farm and ag, I understand hunting, I understand, you know, sometimes for protection in some parts of the country, yes, you need a gun protection. You live in rural areas when there's nobody nearby to help you. But we have we have an issue, we have a real problem. We do. We need to like really look at some of these background checks, reforms, red flagging, all that stuff. We need to. I think we need to very much. Um, so I think it's just kind of like, because something's not working in America. I mean, no other places like us. I mean, something's not working. I don't, I don't have the exact answers, but I'm just like, do you feel emotional watching Steffi? I do. I do. I, I think I think Jack McKinnis would doing a wonderful job on Bold and Beautiful. This advantage of tipping in months in advance. Hard. So, that's, so that's the thing. So... So Matt brings up something that's really funny. So all the shows are ahead. They tape ahead, right? There's so many episodes a week, they tape ahead. Most shows are five to six weeks ahead. Days, I heard, is at eight months. When the pandemic hits, the lockdown hit, they were at six months. So what's so funny was that we used to make fun of them because we stuck in storylines forever that we hated, the audience would hate. But during the pandemic, what show had new episodes the whole time they were at stop? Days of Our Lives. That's the point. Days of Our Lives had new shows. The only shows that had to go out had this, they couldn't show new episodes for like six months. That's what's crazy. So all that ha-ha, the Days of Our Lives, they had to last. They're like, ha-ha, bitches. They had to last laugh. They did. So that makes you laugh on some level. They're so far ahead. But yes, we're stuck with storylines we don't care about. Um, well, here's how I look at it, Daisy Flower. To me, knowing that Finn's alive, the stakes are now raised for me in terms of Steffi's grief because she's grieving not knowing her man's alive. I can still separate and feel her pain. And then over here, I'm like, oh my goodness, she has no idea that he's still here. So for me, it doesn't, it doesn't take me to punch. I, I'm, it, for me, it's, it's, it still works for me. Oh, no, who done it with Esme? Oh, I hope not. I hope not. I'm sorry. I, I disagree. I hope not. I, I, I don't like those stories. They, they, they do, they're overdone. It's so trope. But see, remember, she's Ryan's daughter. So we have a whole, she has to live for, she has to live for a while. There's a whole bunch of stuff that she has to do. I hope Esme doesn't get pregnant. I hope Willow's not pregnant. I hope nobody, I hope none of these people are pregnant because I'm tired of babies being used. It's just like, I mean, babies being, I'm just, I'm so over it all. These are soap tropes. The soaps have been on for 90 years and there's some of these soap tropes. I'm just like, can we do another, can we do another take? It's like another take on this. A little switch. And bold sometimes has been. Yeah. How it's been alive? Well, we're learning that. We, we, we're, learning, we're, we're learning what that Lee somehow is holding on to him. So that's, it's like we're, we're learning, like we're, we're figuring that out like everybody else. I have 21 people watching. I know some, are, some aren't some are talking. I have nine likes. Hit the like button. It helps me out if you like me. If you don't like me, then, you know, don't hit anything. Uh, that's fine. I know, I, know some people, I know some folks hate watch me. And that's what they do. Um, yeah, they, they did a whole show. They showed the whole 
behind us, which she did to whisk him away and the whole thing. So it's on YouTube. I'm sure you can get it. I don't know which day it is, but probably type in House for the Live. YouTube probably pop up. You know, um, what time is 5 30? I guess some time. Okay. Just checking. I guess some time. I was showing you later. I got to make dinner first before I have my show and all that. So I'm, I'm sorry. I'm kind of watching the time, you guys, because I have to make sure. Um, I have to make dinner first, then, then go, then, uh, and then do my show. Let's see. Uh, soap to update soap tropes. Yes, I agree. Completely. All the soaps do. They all do. They all fall prey to some of this stuff. It's like, okay, really? And soaps are a lot of times written by women. So I was like, well, so do you think this is what women want? I guess they do. I guess they think this is what women want. Okay, ow. Oh, there we go. I just wanted to unplug something. I still finished packing, you guys. I didn't finish packing. I'm like, I don't even know. I'm like, ugh. I, 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 I believe it's tomorrow morning early. I haven't finished all my packing. I'm like, oh, well. Uh, I miss when soaps had adventure storylines. Yes, um, it is um, budgets. It's all money, budgets. The audience is not there anymore, and the networks don't care anymore. And that's kind of how that works. I mean, seriously, that's, that's just what it is. I, I missed all location shots and all this stuff. Bold and GH are trying to use what they have around them for exteriors and stuff. Um, you know, tough. Well, Carly is Carly is selfish. It's always about her, and it has nothing to do with Willow. And and she hates Nina for what she's like what she did to her. So it's a back and forth. Nina hated her because she did to her. I mean, it's just it's back and forth. It is back and forth. You feel on some level they could do something with the budget they got. I know Party City's <laughs> it's a Party City. Now you know if they came up there with Party City products, you all would talk shit about them. If they did some shit like that, you know, or, or not, but not Party City, um, Dollar Tree. And they if they started doing usually Dollar Tree things on their sets, you all would point, would point that out and they'd be laughed off TV. Well, I know you guys. I know you guys. Um, they just, but they say, yeah, they can't. They, they, their whole thing is they spent. Jade spent money. They got a, they got a pool set. You saw how proud they were at pool set last year. And this year, this, they're so proud of that pool set. They came and stand themselves. They're so proud of it. So that's where their money went. And and also and uh, what you call it? Uh, you're on the rest list. They spend money on wedding sets. That's what they put all their money on the weddings. And they're beautiful. The wedding sets are beautiful. Uh, days and bowls stay pretty much insular for the most part. They have their fake parks and stuff and fake town squares and things. They kind of, you know. But bowl always has those exterior, those exterior uh, LA shots. Those sweeping LA shots and in, in, in between. You're like, there's LA. There's the 405. I know it. Oh, you remember when Vicky went back to heaven in 2018? He's a whole lot of white blankets. Amazon, I'm, telling you, I'm telling you, soap fans, where you know, you know what you said. Soap fans would talk so much shit. They call everything. We had somebody on here calling. We had somebody on here calling out somebody's kissing technique. They would call. They would call out that so hard. Matt Litchfield, um, favorite game when at outlets or discount stores with designer labels is pointing out which ugly clothing items we put on. Which soap oh, you do that? I, I've never done it before. That's so funny. I know some DIY. I don't know some, I don't know. Some of the DIY tree, Dollar Tree things are good. No, I don't oh, trust. I, I go shopping them. Hey, some of my shit's from there. Um, this little fake plants from there. I don't know how many. I, I, I get stuff from those places. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying, and not all Dollar Trees are the same. And not all Dollar Generals are the same. Not all 90 cents. So certain ones are better than others. Here in LA, my favorite Dollar my favorite 90 cent store is in, is in Sunset, you know, Silver Lake. It's huge, best stuff. I went to a really good Dollar Tree in South Bay Area, of Los Angeles. It was really good too. But they're not all the same either. Like, not all Targets are the same. Some Targets are better than others. So, but I don't know. I mean, you guys, I, mean, you guys, I know we're all being kind of jokey, jokey, but I was like, that's, 
I, I know you guys are calling out because you were the first thing you guys would say would be like, oh, that's just some Dollar Tree. Look at that background from Dollar Tree. And like, they'd be like, yeah, it's Dollar Tree. That's where they come from. So, uh, you know, I don't know. So, see, when I'm at, sorry, man, when I'm at, when I'm at outlet stores, um, look at design label, I'm trying to find what I can wear, find anything in my size. Well, someone see his thing, uh, DC, Soap, DC Soap Sanctuary. Sometimes, sometimes with minimalism or minimalist sets, you can do some amazing stuff with lighting. When they did the, when they did the, when they did the um, uh, I almost said Tony Geary, Luke intervention. It was just a room with chairs. I mean, there's, there's, some, there's, there's times where it, it uh, you're right, there's times when you don't need much. But it's, it's, it depends on the scenes, what's being presented, the whole thing. Um, but I can't even hang a, we can't, I can't even hang a serious talk about this. They're not going to go to Walmart and Target to buy stuff to do to do stuff now. It's just their their budgets are for um, the for the crew, the cast, um, the writers. They got they got to try to stay on the air. They're not going to spend money on anything else extra as they as they can. I just that's how that's just how how it's going to be, kids. They they got they their money is very targeted on where they can spend it. But a lot of times they got paid. They got paid for people to be on these shows. These they don't do it for free. Uh, and and the folks aren't getting paid what they used to on soaps. Let's just let's just let's get they clear that up. Also, they're not. Um, that's why a lot of them do soap events. So it's like they're not you know they're not getting paid exactly what you maybe they they used to was. Um, so if they can't even pay some of their stars a certain amount anymore, they're not going to be working on sets like that either. Um, so you probably should go to Dollar Tree and stuff and get stuff and just say, screw it. But see, hey, bold and beautiful was using mannequins and blow-up dolls, and everybody talks shit about them. Every one. Every single one. Every single one. They all talk shit about them. But they're trying to save lives and work on something. They had cheap wigs. We all called it out. But I gave them points. I gave them points on it saying they were trying at least. So just saying. Yes. Oh, I, 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 I got it. I met, you know, actually, as I said that, I totally, I did it. I, I <laughs> um, no shade. Then they do that because they do get paid at the events. I totally forgot. I, I totally was like, just, just be talking. Yes. That's, and yes, they do. Matt Litchfield, especially celebrity events. Yes. Um, <clears throat> ahem, ahem. Um, but no, I think, yeah, it, it, sometimes minimalism, minimal, minimalist stuff works. Sometimes the outdoors thing works. Um, besides, it doesn't. And uh, God bless them. I, I just know that they're trying. They're trying. They're trying. In some cases, they got. You guys have no idea what the networks don't care about. They don't care about your soaps, folks. They don't. So I tell you this: they don't. Not really. If they could get rid of the soap operas, they would. It's cheaper to produce a reality show of some sort, a cooking show, a talk show, a judge show. It's much cheaper. It just is. It's much cheaper. Do you think they want to pay for all those actors, crew, everybody else? They don't want to pay all that stuff, but they have to. But for some reason, each each show, each channel has their soap. Well, CBS has two. They don't care. They don't, they don't give two shits, folks. So I applaud whatever these soaps, they're, they're, you know, they're MacGyvering shows together. I give them, I give them benefit of the doubt. When it comes to clothes, though, you go to thrift store stuff or Ross or Marshall and get some good clothes. So I'll go back, I'll stand by that statement. Yes, dress directors do want me for Luke's intervention. They did, did they? You are correct. Yes, the blow up dolls. We made fun of that straw like hair. I said, get some better wigs. Go to Sally's beauty supply, get some better hair. But then, but they, but again, I get them points. They were they were the first to go back on air. So of all of daytime, they were the first to go back on air. All the testing protocols to keep shows going on like this and Yeah, exactly. They do. They, they want to well, they, you know. Well, uh, how, how did I say this? I think there's an I I personally think I don't, I don't know I don't know the exact minds of never executives, but I from what I do know behind the scenes I think there's uh, 
somewhat of an obligation to have the shows still the ones that are left still on right now. Don't know how much longer. Um, the shows bring in some money for the network, some and advertising dollars to the network, which are, that's the bottom line. Um, and they fill some hours of the schedule. Say that. Um, but I really do believe if they could cut them out and just say and just do it, they would do it. So I just, I just, from things I've heard and seen, I'm just, that's how, that's how, I, that's how I feel. That's my conclusions. So I don't know. And if I'm wrong, please let me be, let me be wrong. I just, so these are, this one a few times I'd love to be wrong. Oh, I'd love to be wrong. I'd love for stuff to continue for the rest of my, 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 my days on this earth. We're going to continue. But I'm telling you, I don't know how much longer they're going to be on. Oh, sorry, the casting crew. Yes, Matt, the casting crew. Yeah, they well, they definitely want to do it. Obviously, yeah, they definitely want to do it. But I'm just saying, and I'm just saying, I was telling you, we are very fortunate to have them on the air, and it would, and it would behoove us to support them, and really push them, and give them, and give them attention. That's why I try to do all these shows, give them attention, and have the actors on shows. The talk has actually increased having their CBS soap stars on that show. Right, I'm very impressed. Speaking of my other cousin on television. Um, but I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed that they are actually doing more of their stars are coming on that show, the rotation. Because the other shows don't, the view to never have any soap opera stars. NBC, the, the, today's shows have any stars. I mean, days are stars. Yes, Kelly Clarkson had a few people on once or twice. That's it. That, that does not make an appearance. How much longer do you think, so realistically? Uh, I almost don't want to say it because I don't want to put that into the air, into the ether. So I'm not going to. This is why I think Dave's smart. Well, Dave's is smart because Beyond Salem became this huge hit for them on a digital platform. That is the future. That is the future. The future. And so I was like, why did your hospital do it? Because it costs money. I mean, they had, to, they had to find money. And I remember they, they told us in the interviews, they were saying, you know, we had extra sets sitting around. We had extra things. We had actors that we, you know, we had paid. And we had, they, they did it in 10 days. Like, they did it really quick. Like, it was a quick production. Uh, here we go again. Why is this person trying? These people are trying to remove uh, hide user on channel. I'm like, oh, my God. This person is just trying. I'm like. Right. Um, it's completely this. Uh, get back on here. I can see myself. I know. I just, I just hit them. I just reported them and, and tried to delete them. Reported them. It's only the last couple of days. Like, why is this happening all of a sudden? I'm like, I don't I usually don't have this problem. So I'm like, it's just really weird. It's like, it's happening again. Oh my god. Out. Uh, okay, they're trying. They're really trying to report. I keep reporting them. I keep reporting them. I know. I'm, I'm tired. It was so dumb. It's only a recent development all of a sudden. I think it's really weird. So, yeah, so I just, I'm reporting. Every time one comes up, I try to hit it right away, report them and everything. Yes, our PJH had night shift for Charles. You know, I think, yeah. And I agree with Matt. I think the young actor and actress thing should be separate. I don't like that they're together. I don't like that decision at all. I said that on my Emmy show. I don't like that. Um, not a fan at all. Not a fan at all. Well, you know, yeah, that's the thing. I, you know, uh, DC, it's, it's funny because I haven't had spammers in a long time, like a long time. And all of a sudden, the last two days. Yes, I know the views in New York, but they can do remote. 
they do Zoom ones all the time. They can have someone remote come in and do for ABC for General Hospital. It's been done, but they, they, they still do Zoom ones every once in a while. Have somebody from set come in and talk to them. I think it's still, it's part of ABC Disney family because you can still do it. We're not completely done with Zoom, and they aren't either. Well, daytime memories, remember that was a, there's some years we barely got it. Remember? It was on internet, then it was on streaming, and it was, I mean, it was like they had horrible people hosting the thing. Oh, oh, it's gross. Um, it, was, it was bad. Um, right, no substance on the East Coast anymore, but there's still ABC Disney, General Hospital. People on the East Coast watch General Hospital. So they should be able to promote their, their, their one soap opera. No use yet. No use that. No news yet. Waiting to hear back. For, if I'm going to be at the daytime Emmys, I'm waiting to hear back. I got a meantime. I gotta, I'm going to try to find an outfit in the meantime. Got to find an outfit. But yes, I don't know yet. I'm still, still waiting. But it's coming up. I mean, it's June, kids. It's June. It is Autism Awareness and Brain Awareness Month. It is LGBTQIA plus. Pride Month, uh, this month, we have um, also um, Juneteenth. We also have Father's Day. Uh, we have all kinds of stuff. What's funny is, Luther, I used to hang out on West 66th Street outside the building, and it was all my children wanted to live and the view. They were all there. I see Bill Geddes and Barbara Walters leave, and there'll be a few fans there. I, I hung out a couple times there, a lot. I love the Upper West Side of New York, too. It's so beautiful over there. So, oh, yes. I'll take the subway and go over there. They should do specials like a daytime new member. Do you remember that show, James? Why you sleep, but they will. Here's the deal. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get. I mean, you know me. I like to get real with everybody. You're not gonna get new soul viewers. I think it's very similar to wrestling. People feel like these things are like things you go through. So it's like with wrestling, we all watch wrestling at one point, but then you grow out of it, so to speak, even though we know there are folks who watch it all ages. Soaks too. I don't, oh my God, again. Oh my God. Okay, there you go. Report. Oh my God. I was like, okay, report. Okay. I'm trying to catch them right away. When, when this pops up, I try to catch them right away. Um, but no, I, uh, for me, it's not, they're not, it's, it's going to hard to get people. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if there's anything to get people to watch soaps again. If you stop watching, you stop watching them. I don't really know anybody's going to, I, I talk to soap fans. I've asked people, what would it take for you to watch soap again? And they, they just, there's no, they have other choices, they're too busy. It's a major commitment. I think, um, but beyond Salem, it brought soap fans to the streaming platform. That's why it just took people off there and put them back over there. And so I, they, we know, like, well, remember these stuff like, a couple of years ago, they did the whole on ABC 20 years, of, was it 20 years of subs or 40 years of subs? They did, a, they did a sub special on ABC. I think it got decent ratings, but I don't think anybody cared. What I advocate for is a separate streaming app or service. That's all soaps. I would love a soap channel. I love another soap net. That's if I had the money, I'd buy it. But I would love to have a soap channel that's related to all soaps. But we'll see. Well, here's the funny part of all of this. A lot of continuing dramas that are on nighttime and streaming are basically soaps. They don't call themselves soap operas, but they are soap operas. Grey's Anatomy, Scandal, they're all soap operas but they don't call themselves that. They're continuing dramas. They have storyline arcs. That's what's so crazy about this. 
It's like there's all this going on, but it's like there's but they are like. So I just I just I really I highly doubt the specials that would be made we made for us the already so fair because we already know people will watch them because Alan Locker, myself, People Magazine, MJ Weekly, we've done these reunion specials, we talked to the stars, and they literally people are tuning in. They are tuning in, tuning in, tuning into our show, we're getting great views. Um, our app, my after shows, they're tuning in. Um, on YouTube, many of the old clips get lots of views. So there's a there's an audience there, but I think it's an audience of folks who are already who are still watching. Getting new people, I think it's very hard. I think it'd be very hard to do that. You know, um, that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to, I can't block the spam. I'm trying to get them out of here. I can't block them. I can report them, remove them, put them on top of the doll. The only options I have are those are the only options I have. So I'm doing the best I can, folks, because it's not an actual person. They come up differently than like, I, I can block you from this channel. They don't come up that same way. They don't come up that way at all. My options are completely different than, than that. Yes, he was. Uh, Greg Rickard. We love Greg Rickard. The locker today. But there, there's an audience. But so I wonder if we could do us all soap channel or soap app. I mean, I'm talking about all the soaps, nighttime, daytime, obscure, whatever. Bring the generations, you know, passions, Santa Barbara. Like, but then also, there are a lot of people who own some of these properties and don't want to sell them. They won't give me the rights. They won't give me the rights. Um, so that's kind of the problem too. So we'd have, have to find a way to buy, so I can get Guiding Light and As the World Turns and you know, get Loving and The City. Um, there's, there's so many soaps, The Doctors and um, Search for Tomorrow and Another World. I would want all, I, would, I have a whole big plan idea all the time about it. I have a whole plan. If I could have a soap channel, it would be epic. Now I would get folks to work for me who love soaps. We'd also, I mean, I would write a song, create soaps. I would, you know, we would have all kinds of specials behind the scenes. And it's just like, we need, we need something like that. But again, I think it's only for us. I don't think anybody would actually, I don't think it would actually affect any change in the current soaps being on TV. I just think it'd be a nice, it'd just be a nice, I just think it'd, be, it'd, just, be, it'd just be nice to have it. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the. I don't know what the issues are because there's some like Procter and Gamble. They don't want to sell the soaps. You know, I, I know the folks have tried because when there was SoapNet, there were certain soaps that weren't shown on there. There's a reason why Prospect Park was so tight with their entities of of owning all my children and wanted to live that the Mister also couldn't even use half the characters. So I don't know why. I don't know why they're tight. I have no idea why they're tight. Why? Like, that's the point. Why can't they get into some kind of you know beneficial society of you know, we make money, you make money, everybody make money. I mean, they say, I don't I don't know. I, I don't. There's some things I just don't understand. I'm just like, I just, it's, it's all, it's all like, I don't get it. I don't get it. But yes, a niche channel, like Game Show, I think there is room for something like that. With spinoffs, remember What If? Uh, ABC did a What If series where it took characters from all the soaps and mixed them together. In a scene, I love that. See, Disney Plus is doing that with the Star Wars stuff and the MCU stuff. So they're starting to do that now, and it's like that's what's so great about this. Like you can, we can do this. I'm sorry, I'm looking at my award. My my award was in the wrong spot. Yeah, that's a whole other, that's a whole other show. I can't even get into, folks. Um, but I have to get off because it's six o'clock, almost here. I got to make dinner. At eight o'clock in two hours, I'll be on again for my Obi Wan Kenobi show, and we're going to talk about racism uh, of one of the characters and other stuff. Uh, but I'll be back on later, and um, but we'll be on here a little later. And then that's it, kids. In the next couple of days, I will be gone. I will be uh, tomorrow in Sacramento. 
and I will be at the mixtape concert. You know who's playing at the mixtape concert tomorrow night in Sacramento? It will be New Kids on the Block, In Vogue, who I know, Rick Astley, and Salt and Pepper. So I'm very excited to see them all perform together. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, yes. So, but anyway, but my show tonight, my last show for the next couple of days, there'll be my kids and grandkids doing stuff. But everyone, racism doesn't work. <laughs> it's not good. It's not good. We should not support it. 